Welcome to Centenary United Methodist Church. Today is Sunday, December 13th, and it is 2020. Tonight, we are having our community tree lighting, and the community tree lighting is gonna take place at 6 p.m. tonight, right out in front of the church at Centenary. And you'll be able to decorate the tree, come out and get a chance to socially distant and see one, see one another this night. The Advent wreath lighting. Today we light the candle of joy. First the beacon, then the witness. First the sighting, then the celebration. One light. light. One voice shouting, look and see. One flash boasting, brightest and best. Joy. joy. Here beauty radiates, colors dance. Here, praise rises with every burst and glimmer. We, we are, are not, not alone. alone. Please join me in the call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. We, we present, present our, our hearts, hearts in worship. In worship. We, we lift them up in joy. joy. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Let, Let your gentleness, gentleness be known to everyone. everyone. Let, Let our joy overflow. overflow. Rejoice. The Lord is near. The, the Lord, Lord is the one whose light shines, shines in the darkness. darkness. The, the light, light is, is with us. us. And now let us join in the hearing of our scripture from both the Old and New Testament. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. For those living a land of deep darkness, a light has shone upon them. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. From him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. For the word of God for the children of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now let us join together in a time of prayer. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Almighty God, our rock and our redeemer, amen. 
every week of Advent, I have asked you to consider a different room. And out of considering the waiting room or the delivery room, I've offered us a way to think a little differently about preparing our hearts to receive the birth of Christ at Christmas. Today, I would like you to think of a dark room, a room that you are walking in that has no light. Have you ever had to turn off the lights in one end of the room and walk out across and have to walk through the dark? And you know how difficult it is when it gets so dark that you can't see and you begin to walk a little more cautiously. You put your hands out in each step you take is with trepidation. And even though you know the room and you know where the furniture is, you cautiously move. You move in a tense way. What happens when, as you're in that dark room, somebody finally flicks on the switch and you get a light? Well, obviously, you can begin suddenly to see. And so suddenly you're able to see, but more than that, you finally realize the position you've been in as you've been walking through the dark. You realize you can relax your arms. You can move much more comfortably. There is a physical change that you go through when moving through the dark to walking and being in the light. In our scripture today, it says that the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. And so in that, you can imagine that as they've been walking through the darkness, once that light comes on, everything changes. A peace is instilled. Isaiah is describing in prophetic terms a change of the ages an age of darkness that the people were in, where people have been tense, groping, unable to know even what's around the corner. And it all comes to very an end very suddenly, like a brilliant light coming up in a room. But yet poetically, he also points out that this change of the ages is initiated gradually as a child being born, born to rule one day. So Isaiah is prophesying that the Son of God will be born into the world to bring light, moving us from a time of darkness into a time of light. The Gospel of John also poetically draws from this vision of Isaiah and expands upon it to say that, that from the very beginning of creation, the Son of God was present, fully involved in every aspect of the universe. He was with God in the beginning. In the beginning, it says. From before we even began as a people, the presence of the Son of God was there at the creation of all of the universe. And it says that in him, in the Son of God, was life, the fullness of life and light, and that this true light was coming into the world, was ready always to enter the created world, so here you have John describing Jesus as the true light, and in Isaiah saying that Jesus is going to come as a great light, and it makes me wonder what the difference of any of the light matters. What difference is if it's a great light or a true light? When you're groping in the darkness, you just need a light. You don't care if it's the smallest sliver of a light from your cell phone or a great kerosene lamp that appears. You just need to see. You just need light. Why the need to clarify a special kind of light? Are they just being extra, throwing in some extra adjective, adjectives? Because technically, any light can dispel darkness. That's basic science. But this light is going to move us from an age of spiritual darkness to 
an age of peace and everlasting, everlasting relationship with God. And that takes a different kind of light. He says this true light was really the light of all mankind, the light of all humankind. And what that means is that the light of Jesus is similar to the light that is the light that's in you and me. That we were created in the image of God, we are reminded from Genesis, and so we have a light within us. But the human light pales in comparison to this true light that is found in Christ Jesus. Christmas, the season itself, is intentionally placed at this time of year, placed at the darkest part of our calendar year. And that's intentional. Why? Because we celebrate that the birth of Jesus comes in the darkest season. That Jesus, the true light, came in the fullness of time at the darkest moment of human history. But what good is it to you and I if he was born 2,000 years ago to bring light simply to them? If he is not born to bring light to every weary generation, to every human heart. All of us, if we are truly honest with ourselves, have rooms within our hearts and lives that remain dark. These are those rooms that we try to put a door on and, and keep closed because we know once we get in there, we can never find our way out. And it is those rooms that we find ourselves in when you wake up at three in the morning and you can't go back to sleep because you just keep replaying something in your mind. That spiritual dark place that even if you try to not ever go there, it chases you down. It is those places where only the true light of Christ Jesus can shine and get you out. The Bible states again and again that we're never to despair as if there is no hope. And that dark room where you feel the most hopeless, a true light can shine. And it's not a light that any of us can manufacture on our own. It's not a special LED light or fluorescent light or even a candle that we can light. It is a light that God has in the universe at all times and all places. And it is a light that you know and believe in yourself, but it is a light that has to be come down and be born in you, uh, rekindled in the fire of your own love so that you can be set free, that a light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Let us pray. Lord God, as we consider the places of darkness that we both run from, fear to go near, or ones that we seek to avoid. We recognize that there are those dark places that your light desires to shine. And for that, Lord God, we give thanks because it does bring us great comfort in knowing that you walk with your people through every land of wilderness, through every time of darkness, to draw us forth into new light. Lord, we pray this day for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, for those who are in a dark night of their soul. Lord, we pray for those that are entangled in sin and seek to be free once more. We pray with the, the certainty of knowing, Lord God, that in all times and all places, your light shines. And so we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to thank those who have been supporting the ministry of Centenary United Methodist Church through these times of great darkness. It is so good that we are able to connect in every way possible through technology. I give thanks for all of those who have given online and who have sent in their gifts. And I ask that we just continue to recognize that in offering these gifts, God blesses and multiplies them in great service to reach all of this world. Amen. in faith. Find a friend for the journey, for we are blessed to be a blessing. And let us go now in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.